cv.com slash downloads. And then I download the installer that I need for my operating system. And in the meantime, while that is downloading, we can also take a look at our graphic drivers. So in my case, that is NVIDIA. Before we start installing CV Studio, it's important that our GPU drivers are up to date. On the Civit knowledge base, we can find more information about how to install the software, how to use the tools and so on. Now, as we're going through the Civit setup, we want to make sure that since it's the first time we're installing Civit Studio, we want to include the camera drivers. And it's also useful to include the Genicam transport layers for use in, for example, Halcon or so on. Now that we've installed Civit Studio, it's time for us to take our first image. So on the top right corner of the control panel, you can see which cameras you're connected to. It will try to grab the first one it finds. But if you have more cameras connected, you can choose out from this list. In the frame view, we can see the different exposure values that are set for each frame. We have exposure time, iris, brightness and gain. And then we have the filters. So the exposure time specifies how long should the camera expose the scene for. And the iris is basically the aperture opening. The smaller the iris, the smaller the aperture opening. And the brightness is how much light does the projector send out. And the gain is basically the ISO of the camera. In the filters, we have the contrast filter, which defines how much single noise we allow to be included into our point cloud. We can turn on the Gaussian filter, which will try to smooth out a little bit of noise and uh, disturbances. And then we have the outlier filter, which removes points that are outside of a specific range. In this case, it's five millimeters, we can set that to one. Then we have the reflection filter, which will help us deal with interreflections and so on from shiny objects. The final one is the saturation filter, which is basically removing points that are oversaturated. Now, I like to start off with assisted mode, uh, where it will try to analyze the scene and get the capture with the best settings I can find. So first I need to specify how much time I want the camera to spend when it takes, the, takes an image. So in my case, let's say I want to use two seconds. And then I click analyze and capture. And first it will train the scene and then it will suggest a couple of frames for me that it will use. Now, this is the data that it was able to find. And here you can see that we have some various different parts, some easy plastics, some wood, some dark, and some shiny objects. And first we have the point cloud view where we can see it either in 3D color or just in texture. And then second, we have the color view where you basically look at the 2D image that was taken. And third, we have the depth map. And here, by default, it chooses the distance of the depth map to be from the closest to the furthest away point. But you can also use a fixed range, say for example, 490 millimeters in my case to 520 millimeters. Now you can see which parts are within this range. And also on the bottom left, you can see what the pixel coordinate is and what the X, Y, Z values are, and how good the signal to noise ratio is. Now, if I'm not really happy with the frames that was suggested from the system mode, I can go back into manual mode, and all of them will be available from here. And then I can remove redundant frames, uh, if I think they take too much time or don't really help me that much, or I can, for example, adjust them a little bit more for fine tuning, and I can also play with the filter values. Take a frame first, we have the exposure values. So in this case, it has a low exposure time, it has a high aperture opening and a high gain and high brightness. Maybe in this case, I would like to set this a little bit lower. So let's say we go to 40 and then we increase this to 40,000. 
And now I also want to change some of my filter values. I want to set my outlier filter to one millimeter instead of five millimeter. And I grab a new image. And this is what it will give me. Now I can save this file as a CV data format, or I can export it to a PLY, PCD, or XYZ file, or I can save the 2D color image. And then in the view, we can show our histogram, or you can click and select to display the data as a mesh. Now that we were able to find the settings that we want to use, let's open up the Civid SDK to integrate Civid into our final application. So when you install Civid Studio, it comes with some pre-built C++ and .NET samples for Visual Studio. The first thing that you want to do is that you want to make sure that the solution is retargeted. So we right click on the Solution Explorer and then we select Retarget Solution, click OK. And then we want to select one sample that we want to use. In my case, I want to use the sample capture with visualizing the 3D point cloud. So I right click this one and then I select that as my starter project. There's three things you need to do to take images with a Civil One Plus in the SDK. First, you need to set up a Civil application. Second, you need to connect to the camera. And third, you need to grab a, an image. And you can also adjust the settings according to your needs for that scene. And then you can use what you found in Civil Studio. Now, when we build and run this application, you will see that it connects to the camera, then it will grab an image, and then it will show that point cloud back to me. And this point cloud, we can then export and use that in our final application to do, for example, bin picking or inspection. Depends on what you want to do.